isn't he adorable? Oh my goodness, look at this guy. And look at this guy. These are my two new horses. I really want to introduce them to you, but first I need to make some name signs for their stalls. So we're going to make some DIY name signs for horses stalls and I've got this cedar fence board super cheap at Home Depot and I'm just going to cut off a couple of sections because these are going to be the name plates. Super easy to keep them the same size. I just take the first one and line it up and then cut the second one. And then I'm just gonna make them a tiny bit smaller and make them exactly equal. So I'm gonna put both of them together and cut a little piece off the end. And now the name sign plates are exactly the same. And I find it easiest to pre-drill the holes because this way it's not gonna interfere with where I'm gonna be putting the names on the name plates. So I just used a drill and drilled some holes. I made them kind of large because I wanna make sure it's easy to fit the twine through. I like to use twine. I've got tons of it, so why not? And again, I'm trying to make them the same. I'm gonna go ahead and use that first piece of wood and drill into the second piece of wood. That way, these signs are gonna be identical in where the names go. And then I take the drill and make the hole just a little bit larger because that will make it easier for larger pieces of twine or whatever I'm gonna to use to hang these with to go through. And I wanna make sure they're just perfect for my new horses. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand everything down on the front as well as the sides and the back. And this is just an orbital sander and I'm using 80 grit sandpaper. So it's a little rough, but it gets the job done pretty fast. Okay, so now the sanding part is done. The boards are nice and smooth. So now what I wanna do is find out which is the prettiest side. And I'm going to make that the back because I'm gonna stain the back of it and I'm gonna paint the front. This guy's pretty on both sides, actually. Hmm. We'll make him the front, him the back. This one. Hmm, I think I'll make this one the back because that is awfully pretty too. So I'm just gonna open up some gloves. I actually bought these gloves for my first aid kit for my barn. I think they were like, I don't know, $3, three or $4 on Amazon. And this is a pack of 50 nitro gloves. I have some wood stain. This is Minwax wood finish. I think it is early American. Yeah, early American wood stain. These gloves are very, very nice. A lot of stretch. These are in the large size. I don't want to get stain on my watch. So I kind of want to make sure that's covered up. Then I'm just gonna use a shop towel, dip that into the stain, and then stain my wood. Now this wood is just a cedar fence post that I got it. Home Depot and I wasn't using it for anything. And I thought, you know what, let's make some stall signs for my new horses that are coming home next week. And I like the stain because then I don't have to paint all the different sides. 
of my stall signs. I only have to paint the front. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off some of the excess, if there is any, of the stain. There's a little bit, isn't there? Pretty neat what you can do with just some spare lumber or an inexpensive piece of wood, especially on a rainy day like today. Kind of fun to have a project to do. It looks really pretty, doesn't it? So that is the back of the wood. And then this is what it looked like originally. And while my wood was drying, this is what was going on outside. If the thunder would stop, I think you can hear the water. Holy crap, that's literally a river. Ooh, there's rapids even. Good thing you mowed all this. No. Holy crap. Okay, so I'm in my craft room and I actually had three pieces of wood because I'm gonna make three signs today. But these are the stall signs for my new horses. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip them over so I can paint them. Now I'm gonna paint these gray like this color gray, because this is the color of my barn, sort of. So I'm thinking I might want to add a little bit of black so I get a little bit of a darker gray. I haven't quite decided, but, because it is pretty light. So let's see if I have a darker gray. All right, I did find a little bit of a darker gray. I hope I have enough of this because I don't have a whole lot. So hopefully I have enough for both of these signs. So this is just an acrylic paint. I'm just gonna paint it on. I'm gonna try to keep it from getting onto the sides. I just want it on the front of the sign. If it goes in the holes, that's not a big deal. This paint looks like it's going pretty far, so that's a good thing. And I have to say that looks pretty good. So one done, two to go. All right, that is very exciting. I had enough of that gray to cover both of my stall signs that will go on the front of my horse's stalls. Very, very cool. I am curious, what would it look like if I took a little bit of this lighter gray, maybe even a little bit more of the lighter gray on my stall signs? Here's a little backup piece of wood. So I can kind of blend that out. But I'm just curious. That looks kind of cool. Kind of neat, gives it a little bit of a dry brush technique. I like it. So I'm gonna do that again on my other one. All right, so now I have both of the name signs done for the horses. I just have to let them dry and then we can put the names on and then we'll almost be done. Very easy. And I think I'm going to go work with my Cricut machine and come up with a lettering for my horse's name. So I'm gonna go work on that while these dry. Now this is inside Cricut Design Space and what I'm gonna do is make some lettering for the horse's names. So first I picked out a font and I will leave a link down below in case you like this font. But first I did Pumbaa's name and then I was just playing around with the sizing of it because I want to make sure that it's going to pretty much fill up the nameplate. And I think you can see the dimensions. So just by dragging out that corner, it's actually increasing the size of the word. So 
I have Pumbaa done. So now I'm going to do the big horse. And his name is going to be... Timon! So I have Pumbaa and Timon. So again, I'm going to resize that. I'm going to go ahead and unlock it at the top and then resize the name. And by unlocking it at the top, this allows me to change not only the width, but also the height of the lettering. Then I'm gonna go ahead and test and see what this looks like. I'm gonna hit make it. And that's what it'll look like when I cut it out on my Cricut machine. And I'm happy with the sizing. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this because my Cricut machine is upstairs. So I'm going to save this file so I can open it on my laptop computer next to my Cricut machine. And by saving it, then I can access this file anywhere that I can open up Cricut Design Space. So I showed you how I chose the lettering and made it using my Cricut machine. And I went ahead and cut out the names. And now all I have to do is weed the names from the vinyl and then put them onto the name sign. Now the signs that I made, I showed you how I made them. I showed you how I painted them and stained them. But what I didn't show you was I took this out into my garage and I gave it a coat of, I guess it's like a high gloss, finish on the back as well as the front because I've had instances in the past when I've put the vinyl onto a wooden surface that I painted it peels the paint off too and I don't want that to happen with these stall signs. They actually are really pretty totally protected now from being outside because that's where they're gonna live. Look at how shiny that is oh my goodness that is so pretty. That's the sign. So now I have already cut out the names and they are on this piece of vinyl, which is kind of hard to see. You probably can't see it at all. I'm having a difficult time seeing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut down this vinyl without cutting the names. So now what I'm gonna do is remove this excess vinyl. If you're gonna be doing this for yourself and making some stall signs with your Cricut machine and you haven't used the vinyl a lot, this is permanent adhesive vinyl. So this is not the HTV. The HTV vinyl, let me show you the difference. Doesn't look that different, but this is the HTV vinyl. So I'm actually going to be putting this on a t-shirt which the HTV vinyl is high transfer or high temperature vinyl that you can use for iron on. This is just basically a sticker, but it's permanent. So once I put it on my wood piece, that's it. It's gonna be stuck. So now this is the fun part. This is weeding the vinyl. And I find that with the sticker type vinyl, the permanent vinyl, it weeds so easy and that excess vinyl comes off really nice. So here's my Pumbaa. I just have to remove the inner parts. And for taking these little pieces of vinyl like that, a lint roller works really well. You can just kind of stick it down and it'll stay there. And then I can remove these inner pieces of vinyl from the name. Pretty cool. So that's gonna be my Pumbaa's name sign. You guys are gonna get to meet Pumbaa really soon. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with Timon. I'm going to remove the excess vinyl. Getting it started is the hardest part. But if you've ever worked with the HTV vinyl and then you come to the permanent vinyl, you are just going to love how easy it is to remove that vinyl. So much easier than HTV. And with Timon's name sign, just have one interior piece to remove. 
and that's it. I thought Timon was spelt with an E, but it's not. It's only T-I-M-O-N. And again, I'm gonna check. Yes, the sizing is awesome. And to apply the vinyl to the sign itself, what I'm gonna have to do is use some transfer tape because if I were to peel off each of these letters and try to put them on, I'm not gonna be able to keep them even. But using some transfer tape, I can take the lettering and transfer it onto this, and then it'll make it easier to put on the sign, the finished product. And you can find this transfer tape on Amazon. This stuff is amazing. Just put it like that. I'm gonna go ahead and do Pumba as well. And then I'm gonna use a, I don't even know what this is called. I can't even remember what this is called. I don't know, but what I'm gonna do is just push down the vinyl onto the transfer tape, work it on both sides. Scraper, that's what it's called, it's a scraper. And this is an extra large one. I think I got this on Amazon for like six bucks. It was an awesome deal. Now we'll see if I did a good job. I just wanna make sure I line it up and get it where I want it to be. I have my little hangers that I've already pre-drilled so I don't have to worry that I'm going to damage my vinyl. And once you put it down, that's it. That's what it's gonna be. So make sure you get it right the first time. And then you just peel the backing away. And I find if you keep the transfer tape close to the project, it makes it much easier to remove from the vinyl. And just like that, I have created a nameplate for my horse's stall. Isn't that adorable? All right, Pumba is done. I don't have to seal it or anything. I've already done that part. And now it's time for Timon's. I have created stall signs for my horse's stalls. Do you sense a trend? Do you sense a theme here? We have Timon and Pumbaa. My dog's name is Mufasa. It just, it works. So very excited to bring Timon and Pumbaa home tomorrow. So what I'm gonna go do now is put these on their respective stalls and see how they look. And here are the signs on their respective stalls. This is Timon's stall. And this is Pumbaa's stall. I think they turned out great. This was a super easy project. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can come back and watch another video of me introducing you to my new horses. I think you're really gonna like it.